What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to Luzanak. It's episode number 17 and everyone say thank you. Say thank you to the football manager gods. Julian Blaze, welcome to Luzanak for the long haul my friend. Yes, he has signed a deal to join the club. £600 a week, a two year initial deal but with loads of conditional extensions. I'm so relieved everyone. He was on an amateur deal. I honestly thought we were going to lose him every single day throughout the winter break. I approached him and one day he just finally gave in to our persistence and he was willing to talk to us. Despite interest from elsewhere, he's now signed a long-term deal. We've set the asking price to £300 million. Basically, don't come near him and no one is interested. So, crisis averted. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, at WorkTheSpace, which, I mean, if you're not doing, then what are you doing? Um, you might have seen that Wayne Rooney, I was looking at signing, um, yeah, I tweeted out a screenshot of Wayne Rooney on trial with us. I would still quite like to sign Wazza. Um, the big issue is, he just wants too much money. I can't get him in, unfortunately, as a player. I, so, yeah, the, the Wayne Rooney dream, and it was a very short-lived dream, it's dead. He enjoyed a week here at Luzernak on trial, but we can't get the salary sorted. And to be honest, with his physicals, I'm not entirely sure where he'd fit into the team anyway. So, let's get into fixtures since you last here. As I already alluded to, we have had a winter break. So, we played two games in December, two in January. And as you can see here today, we are going to take on US Saint Malo, who are currently in fifth. A big game for us as we sit in second. And well, Let's go through the game since you were last here. The first game that we had and the second and last game of 2021, it was against Auxerre. It was in the French National League Cup. We lost 2-0. Um, it was a really tight game. Went to extra time. Uh, well, not extra, not extra time, rather added time. Yeah, they scored two goals, one in the 94th minute, one in the 97th. The later one was a penalty. We gambled. We went for the win. It didn't pay off. Um, yeah, a little bit, little bit of an upsetting way, I suppose, to lose that one. Uh, the next game we had, my word, one of the best games of the entire series so far, in my opinion. However, there were nine goals. We would be here all week looking at them. Ultimately, we were never really in contention with this game. We had a sending off, which definitely didn't help our case. 5-1 it finished. Julian Blaze, though, got a goal in this game, and what a goal it was. Drink this in, enjoy this. I'm hoping we're going to get more of these kind of goals from him you know, ran through a few tackles, went through, cool, calm, collected, into the bottom corner. And that was the end of 2021. We've had a month's break. And, uh, well, since the break, we've come back in to the league, of course, out of both cup competitions we started in. And we've done okay. We beat Angers' second team 2-1. As you can see here, Barane Bar scored a set piece. Late on in the second half, Manan continued on with his fine goal-scoring form. And, uh, well, a good little win there, despite the fact they did score in the 66th minute which was a little bit of a scare. Uh, the other game that we had was against FC Gobel Gobelins Paris. I'm just going to call you the Gobelins. Uh, we won this one 3-0. Hugo Robert got us off to a fire, uh, flyer. I was getting worried. You know, he hadn't fired in a goal in about a month or two. And, you know, he, he's known for his goals the centre-back. He got one there. Julian Blaise then scored one. I mean, he's just settled in since he signed a proper deal. It's as if the money's a motivator for him. And, uh, well, in the second half, we made sure of the win. 3-0 it finished. Mutaki in the 59th minute. Love to see it. Good little result. And, uh, well, if we look at where we sit off the back of those results, you can see right now we are in second. We are three points ahead of Ville uh, Ren are three points ahead of us. They've won five of their last five. They're quite good. Uh, for US Saint Malo, you can see here, they're only four points behind us. So a win for them would really close the gap. This is, without a doubt, a very, very big game for us. You can see here, Sega Kieta still doing very, very well with eight assists leading the way in the league. Kiber now joint most clean sheets. I must admit, as of late, we've kind of slowed down on the clean sheet front. It's something that we really had pride ourselves on and had been doing a really good job of. But yeah, a few goals conceded here and there, unfortunately. But regardless, obviously we find ourselves in a good position. You might think having gone through January, Jack, you must have done a ton of transfer business. And the simple answer is, not really. Uh, we had a few youngsters who have actually been poached and signed away. But in the grand scheme of players that we've lost, I'm not going to start crying about them. I guess Lacroix here, we might live to regret. He's gone to Ligue 2 to play for Auxerre, but... He doesn't look that good. I don't know what they see in him, but clearly they see something that I don't. And in terms of ins for us, we've signed absolutely nobody. Um, with deadline day approaching, we are looking to make one signing, and it would be this guy, Mamadi uh, Bangre, who uh, formerly of uh, Toulouse. He was released midway through the season. Um, obviously, we've hit that point in the year where I can start looking at players' contracts expiring in six months, You know, seeing what might be available. In fact, you can see here, it's exactly what my last search was. And uh, you can see there's a few Toulouse 
some Montpellier players here. Um, kind of interestingly, uh, I was keeping an eye on this guy here, uh, Mamadi Bangare, and he just got released midway through the year. Toulouse decided for a mutual termination that his time was done. So if we could snap him up, that would be great. Uh, prior to him being released, he had significantly higher demands. But as you can see, he was on our shortlist, was released three days ago. That kind of came up on our radar. I think he could be a pretty good attacking winger for us with a ton of potential. 16 determination is not bad. And uh, yeah, I'm all about, you know, adding in new young players and it would be very on brand, I suppose, for Toulouse uh, to be giving us another one of their younger prospects. But because we've only played four games, because it's been a winter break, not a great deal's happened. So I think with that in mind, we'll get into the game against US Sam Malo. Obviously, fantastic bit of news here is the fact that uh, a few players who are out injured are now fit again. For example, Barane Barr. Of course, he was injured uh, for a few months. He's back now. Of course, a month to recover is lovely stuff. It does mean that Diaby, who he bought in to be his replacement, kind of temporarily, who also got an injury is now just kind of a backup but he's a he's a pretty solid backup to be fair there's a there's a reasonable argument to say that he should be on the bench instead of Amadou Fool of course Amadou Fool a, a player from our academy generated when we first joined and started at the team he's actually a very good centre back and when we've played him he's done quite well but I do kind of like what DRB offers just from a slightly more complete perspective and also from a perspective of he can play in the centre mid positions, which we do need. So looking at the team, I think this is the squad that we're going to go with. Uh, obviously, Billingley, Enzo, Robert, Scodato and Gebert, that's fairly standard at this point. Barane, Bars back. Maureen has continued to have an absolutely superb season. Not perhaps as improved as much as I would like, particularly with those physicals. But for now, you know, he's waving the Luzanak flag well. Big Dub, of course, was out injured to start the year. He's now got a few games under his belt. He's starting to find his groove, is the 19-year-old. Keen to see what he can do today. And our front three is going to be Manan, Zobo and Blaze. This has quickly become the locked-in best 11, which feels kind of criminal when you've got Sega Keita lurking around. And actually, I might even bring him in for Blaze today. Um... I don't know, we, we've got some really good attacking players in the wide area. Not many players who I would describe as natural inside forwards, unfortunately, but everyone is kind of putting in good performances. And actually, when you look at things here, Zobo's got six goals, Keita's got five, Manan's got eight, Blaze, by comparison, two goals, four assists. Yes, he's played fewer games, but I feel like we can slowly bed him into the team. Maybe he can be an impact sub for us today. Worth noting, just because Marina's jogged my memory, if we just look at the youth candidate screen, it could be another very good year for youngsters. It's kind of interesting. There aren't that many positives here. However, beyond the positives, um, there is one that stands out. And it's the fact it could be a golden generation for the club. So despite the fact that we don't have another number of players coming through in any single position, we haven't got any new wingbacks, we've not got a goalkeeper, we've not got a centre-back, we've not got a wide midfielder, we've not got attacking midfielders. There are at least a few players, it seems like a striker and a centre-mid, who could be pretty useful. So, Football Manager, you're getting my hopes up after the last intake and with all the improvements we've done to our youth facilities and our youth coaching more recently. I am optimistic. I suppose that is something we are going to find out in due course. And well, let's get into this. We're not quite, I don't think, at the halfway point in the league season yet. Of course, it's a 30-game season, but with all the cup competitions played and, well, knocked out of now, uh, I think we are probably at around the halfway point in terms of total competitive matches for us this year. Could be a very big one, though, this one. Away from home against San Malo, um, as I already mentioned. If they win this game, they go behind us by one point, and Villafranche could still leapfrog us. Uh, on the flip side, a win here, and we start to look very good for promotion. Of course, last episode, a couple of huge games. Looking to continue on with uh, the good performance we had in the second of those games. As so we have a chance here, Zobo goes to Sega Keita. And on this wide-hand side, took the corner, it was clear, but to Big Dub. Oh, my word, what a save by Lume. There, he holds on to it. A chance, certainly. A chance which their keeper was more than up for, though. 55% of the ball, all the shots early on. We've started the better of the two teams. What can we do here? Hugo Robert, wide to Enzo. He now launches it forward to Manan. Now with Barr. Options on the right. Big Dubs dropping into that little bit of space as the advanced playmaker. Zobo. Surely got to go to Billingley on the right side here, although Marin inside, lovely build-up play here. A little unorthodox, Zobo tries to cross it in, goes straight to our right back fortuitously, and Billingley runs in, big dub arriving late. Keeper could not stop that, that header too hot to handle. Absolutely huge performance for us there, big dub coming up with it, Billingley with a bit of a fortuitous ball in after it deflected to him, but we will take that all day, every day. That is a little bit of a confidence builder, I feel like, at this point. 
10 minutes gone, get an analysis ahead, and well, let's turn this into a demolition job. Let's show that we are the go-to promotion team, boys. Billingy, switching it over to Barane Bar, who now puts over onto the left-hand side for Enzo. Football for Takieta, we are just pulling them all over the place. Ball it back post, cleared away, but to Morin. Billingley, again, having so much joy down this right-hand side. They are in all kinds of trouble. To Zobo now. He can't pull it back, unfortunately. And maybe a counter. Two on two at the back here. Hamel. I mean, they've not had a shot yet. So it'd be very on brand for our season for them to come through and with their first shot of the game find the back of the net. Scudetto, though, back to Gibert. We go again. This is a long highlight. I feel like there's got to be something good at the end of this. There's got to be something big this is building up to. Gibert. Cleared away now. Bakanda, that's offside. Surely, that's got to be offside. The woodwork hit, it was offside. I should be a linesman. Give, give me the flag. Give me the flag. I'll do it myself. I'll do it. It's like Sunday League, you know, where your sub has to be the linesman. I will do that as manager of Luzanak. I'm totally okay with that. Anyway, Sega Kieta over the corner. Whips in. Big dub under it. Big dub almost with his second goal of the game. Loom holding on to it. He just looks like a constant threat, does the centre attack in mid. Whenever the ball is whipped into the box, he's there. He's not your conventional attacking midfielder. All 189 centimetres of him. Gibert launching the ball forward. Manan nods it down to Keita. Now with Barane Bar. Keita with it again, bringing it forward. Options all around him, including Enzo on this near side. Whipped towards the back post. Robert, uh, Ruben clears it. Lots of long highlights. Lots of highlights where we have chances and then it feels like they could hit us on the break. And they're going to try and do that here, although that effort, I was going to say it was awful. I feel like awful would be an understatement. What was that? My nan could do better than that. Like, literally my nan. Not not this guy, my actual nan. You know what I mean. Um, I mean, my nan could have done better than my nan. <laughs> Stop it, Jack. Stop it. It's never going to get old. I'm sorry. It's just never going to get old. I'm terrible with my puns. And I'm not very good at them, so, you know, I get one or two good ones, and I will just recycle them constantly, I'm sorry to say. But, no, looking at this game early on, I feel like we've been a pretty solid team in this game. Um, we've looked okay. Sega Keita now to whip it in. Options in the middle. Cleared away somehow, but only as far as Hugo Robert. Seven for the season for the centre-back. Why does he play centre-back? He's got the attacking intent and positioning of Lionel Messi. Has this man. The ball whipped in by Keita. Dealt with reasonably well. Scadato nodded it back into the mixer. And Robert was there to, well, get the mess. Clear up the spillage. Find it. Put it in the back of their net. 2-0. And I don't want to speak too soon here, but we have been so by far and away the better team. I'm feeling pretty good about this result. Still with 45 minutes left. Although Football Manager wants to give me a minor heart attack. <laughs> I had complete faith in you, Gaber. Never doubted you, pal. Never... Never questioned whether or not it was going to go in. He's dealt with that well, to be fair to him. And well, he slowly brings it out and spreads it out to Enzo here. On this near side, now is Sega Keita. What can Sega do? He's going to mega drive at the defence. Enzo, can he pull away from the starting grid? The Ferrari, <laughs> stop it. The, too many puns in this team. Too many puns, bar. Have you any wool? He does. He's got a pass in him to Marin. Manan. Patient build-up play here. Lovely 1-2. Lovely 1-2. Deserved a better finish at the end of it. Marin threaded through Manan. It could have been 3-0 before half-time. It could have started to get very, very embarrassing. As things stand, though, we've been the better team. We deserve to be two goals up. Let's see if we can keep it going into the second half. You ask St. Malo. I mean, look at them. Look at them. They've done nothing. And we've got another chance here. Seiki Kieta whips it in. Billingley heads over. You know what, Sega? You've done okay. You've done okay, but you know what? It's time to bring in Julian Blaze. It's time to bring in the youngster. He's got his new contract. He's the second highest earner at the club. I'm definitely overpaying him, but it's a long-term deal, and that's why I've been willing to pay him the money that we're giving him. And, I mean, look at him. Over the corner, whips it in. Big dub, looping header. Hits the crossbar and goes over. We are... Well, you'd say we're within touching distance of our third goal, which would surely secure the win. We've been all over... Them in this game. Enzo with it. Options on his left. Blaze is there. Loads of space for him to get onto here. He's got the pace. He's got the dribbling. Goes back to Enzo. Ball whipped in. Manan underneath it. Blaze should keep this alive. Does keep it alive. Puts it in intelligently. What a lovely little assist. And Stefano Zobo lurking away at the back post. 
No one saw him coming. He was like an alligator just on the surface of the water. And as the prey that was the ball came flying into the box, he was there to snap his big jaws. He got ahead on it. Seven goals for the season for him. He's had a really good impact, of course, on loan this year from Toulouse. I think it's Toulouse and not Montpellier. Whichever team he's on loan for, from, I would quite like to sign him, I think, going into next year. I think he has enough quality to really offer us something going potentially into the National 2. Oh, not the National 2. The National. The actual National. The third tier. It would be a tied record with the highest level that Luzanak have ever reached if we could get promoted this year. Blaze whipping in the ball here. Zobbo's underneath it. And what well, they very nearly linked up again. The ball narrowly over the crossbar. Not far away at all. So many chances in this game. It's kind of a shame that we've only been able to take three of them. This could have been a really, really confident route. Still chances though. Blaze dinks it in. The keeper punches it out. That is mm, weird technique. I'm not going to question it. Now with Gwengen, who clears up to Vieira. That is not Patrick Vieira. I'm pretty confident in saying that. For fun and out with it. I mean, if they got one now, would I start to panic? Probably not. I might live to regret that. It's 3-1. We're still two goals to the good with three minutes plus added time left. Surely they can't. They're not doing it. They're not doing it. I'm going to say it now. I'm confident. Joel Bukanda has picked the ball out the back of the net there. Like there's some significant intent and potential for the comeback. I'm still feeling pretty good. Could Gebert have done quicker there? Could he have got down quicker? Could he have done better? I'm going to say yes to both of those things. He was not great there. But unfortunately for us, the clean sheet is gone again. And there may be no Golden Glove award for Gibert, But I'll tell you what there is. There is another three points scored. And we are looking very, very good. A tricky away game against a team who have been in some good form. One of our big promotional rivals. You can see we pull away from Villafranche to six points. But they have got that game in hand. As for US Saint Malo, um, of course, the team next closest to us after Villafranche, seven points behind us at the halfway point in the season. We are officially there. Things are looking pretty good right now. I don't want to speak too soon, but I'm feeling quietly confident, folks. Quietly confident indeed. Anyway, looking ahead, we've got a big influx of fixtures. Lots coming thick and fast. In terms of when we're going to be back, it's a fantastic question which I'm not sure I know the answer for. We may come back for one of these games against a slightly lesser opposition, I think. Maybe this game against this team, uh, Chartres Football. Um, the reason being that I think that is just after our youth intake day, so it could be quite nice to link that in with an episode. Talk about the next generation of Luzanac players, big them up um, in you know five or six games' time, and well... After that game, there'll only be nine games left of the season, and there'll be a lot to play for, I'm sure, and we should have a pretty good idea for exactly where we're going to be competing ahead of a very intense end of the year that does see us play US San Malo on the final day of the season in May. If they're going as well as they are now, and we bottle a little bit, that could still be a very, very big match in the context of the season. But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up everything from me. I don't think we're going to go too crazy in the January transfer market, but I suppose we'll have to wait, see and find out. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. I will see you guys again tomorrow. It is me, Jack. Pray for a good youth intake and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.